Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm pleased to be joined by Dan from Talk Forest TV to get all his thoughts ahead of the game on Sunday. Dan, how's your season going? You know what, it, when you look at it from last season to, to this season, I mean, there was a thing that went about um, after the 10th game and the progression that has happened from last season to this season is massive. I mean, we will had one win within the first 10 games last season and that, that was against West Ham, funny enough. But um, this season, I feel like that you can see that progression from um, from it because obviously uh, we got a couple of wins, got beat Chelsea away, so we got our first away win over there. Um, obviously, we beat uh, Villa on Sunday, which to be fair, to beat an informed Villa team with how they are playing, it's I mean, not a lot of people would have said that Sunday before kickoff. Um, so to get a couple of wins already, um, I mean, I'm quite happy. To be fair, um, I, I mean, and to be where we are in the table, I'm I couldn't be any more happier. What's changed from last season to this season? What's different? I think last season it was all about survival. Whereas this season. Yeah, fair enough. What we have to do last season, we have to literally build a squad from scratch near enough. And it was all about saying, up oh, where's this season? We had the fundamentals in place to build on the hard work from last season. So I feel like the fundamentals and us having that core squad, um, it makes a massive difference. Because we've not had that over the last six, seven years since Maranac has been here. So to have us really set a settled squad and a settled manager in Tupo where he knows where we need to swim for. And that's been a massive um, difference for me, like having that core group and core manager. And we've been able to like buy better players this season, whereas last season, yeah, fair enough, a lot of people might have wanted to come to Forest, but they might not want to be in a relegation battle. Whereas this season, they'd be like, we can bring in that better calibre calibre player where they can take us to that next level. Ben and Johnson obviously left. Were you a little bit worried when he left that you'd struggle without him? You seem to be getting on fine without him, though. If one then once, I, I always expected he was going to go. Um, and it might have took us a game or two just, just to adjust to it. But I think we're doing a lot. Right. I mean, it's... I know they always say one player does make a team, but we probably don't really nowadays. And I think now we've got like Ilando in and settled, we've got um Hudson Adoy's in and settled. I think I think we'll be all right with them too. I just getting them to breed it into how Cooper wants to play. Really. What's, what's your thoughts on Steve Cooper? I've seen before the Villa game, I've seen there were some articles going round on mainstream media, nothing from Forest fans, but from journalists in general saying he's got to be under a bit of pressure soon. You know, he spent a lot of money last summer. He spent a lot of money this summer. At what point does Steve Cooper have to start providing results as well as this sort of hearty performances? What's your thoughts on your manager? Man, not really changed for that last season or this season. I think um, obviously, there were one point last season where I thought it seemed we got to back him or sack him, really. And to be fair, Marion Akers, he stuck to his guns because he has got a bit, a bit of a reputation at Olympia Cross for being sacking managers left, right, and centre. So, um, um, to be fair, what Cooper has done to far his fans, they gave us that hope. I mean, and I think this season, I think. A bit like last season, like the media are against him again, and they're just trying to pinpoint a manager. And to be fair, I'm fully behind him. Like you can see what he's trying to do. He tried to build something, and we we not had that bit of stability for quite a few years. I mean, last time we had a manager that been here over two years, Billy Davis. That when we got back to back playoff defeat, so that was nearly like eleven, twelve years ago. So for me, it's Getting that stability and get, letting him build something. And obviously, like you said about spending and everything, I think they're going to come a point where he has to. But for me, you've got to let him at least see this season out, 
give him probably summer and start next season. But then if it gets to a point where relegation is finny, then you might have to look at it in the summer. But ain't no press, ain't no worry for me at the minute. I mean, he's a legend to a lot of Forest fans. It's just obviously the media being media and just trying to do say something, but say something or try and put a bit of pressure on the manager when they no need. Good man, Dan. Uh, what's your aims for the season then for Forest? I think it's becoming being better than last season. They actually had that, but I think when I look at it, probably mid table I'd be happy with somewhere between twelve and six. 12th and 15th, for I'll be happy. Um, if we get any higher, it's a bonus. But I think I don't want to aim too high and be disappointed. But I don't want to aim too low and be like, yeah, be like that season. I think we've got to gradually build it to a fair. So mid table, I'll be happy. Um, for any West Ham fans who's watching that hasn't seen much of Nottingham Forest so far this season, which players should they be looking out for? Oh, the, um, I mean, our midfield three at the minute it's just unbelievable. That like, because we've got Sandalwa from PSV, and we've got Dominique S in, and we've got Mangala, and them three they work really together. So, I mean, it's been really good to see how West Ham do combat that. Um, but it got to be Tower Wani to be fair. Um, I mean. Is that sort of modern day swag for me that he can play up top to it, up high, and he can control it or head it, take to feet, he can turn defenders. And if that's sort of more modern day nine that we look at it like 20 years ago, modern day number nine is in the box going goals. But Tower's more of a modern day nine, so probably Tower one, really. Yeah, he's somebody I would have liked at West Ham. I've seen him plenty of times in Bundesliga. So when he went to Forest, and you, you you dived into the Bundesliga market quite often last summer, summer yeah. two thousand twenty-two, because I thought New Catty was a really good signing for you as well in Nawoni. But once one player has caught my eye for for Nottingham Forest this season, I'm not, I didn't know anything about him. Is your centre back? Is it Murillo? Murillo? How do you pronounce yeah. his name? Yeah. Um, Every time I see him, he looks outstanding, like a real classy. It looks like a, an attacking midfielder playing centre back or something with his flair and his passion and his skill, his ability on the ball. I mean, is he like that every game, or have I only tuned in when he's really good? I'll be honest, you. I think he took a lot of us by surprise. To be fair, um, is that sort of like that play that he said? Like, is that Brazilian centre half that he can defend, but he can play that like, attacking midfielder like, with his four out of feet. Like he can play really good football and he can play long ball and it's brilliant. And or he can just play football. Um he can pass it round. So and to be honest, he's only twenty one and he's only made his debut this year for um the team he was at before he came to Forest and for him to be at that level already, I mean two, three years down the line, he might be a big club. Yeah, I think I think you'll, if he keeps up his performances from what I've seen, I think he'll struggle to keep a hold of him. Um, I never heard of him, and then when when I went to watch Forest, he was playing. I was like, I don't know this guy. I didn't even know you signed him to be honest with you. But throughout the game, I was really impressed by his defending. But then I was really impressed by what he was doing on the ball. And yeah, but sometimes Brazilian centre backs can be a bit chaotic in the Premier League. Well, I say mainly David Luiz can be a bit chaotic, um, but he just looks absolute class whenever I've seen you play. Anyway, enough about your team, Dan. Time to talk about my team. What's your thoughts on West Ham? I'll be honest, with you, West Ham. The very when I look at West Ham in the Premier League, they're a completely different side to Europe because when you play in Europe, you're very much. A really good team, but in Premier League, you just don't seem to click it for me. Like, you get some really good results, but then all the results, I look at West Ham and I think they should be beaten. It was like Brentford last week, to be fair. Two know, I thought, yeah, West Ham coasting this, then a um, couple of mistakes and all that. And I thought, oh, wow. Um, Gerald Bowen, I, he's a really good player for me. Like, I mean, he's your talisman. Like, 
I mean, playing on that right is really, really good. And I can see if he's going to continue like he is, I can see him being picked up by like your Man City or someone just because of how really good he is. And how Man City do play football with them in 30 windows. I can see him going there. Um, I think, I thought Ward Price is a really good signing for you. I think you got him on a really good deal. And to have someone of that calibre with set pieces, I think it helps you um, out. And I think it's a really good replacement for us, who obviously we all know Rice to West Ham and everything. Um, I think it's a good replacement for him. It, yeah, fair enough, it's not a Rice, but what he does offer is really good. Right then, Sunday afternoon, uh, London Stadium, my team versus your team. How do you see the game going? I'll be honest, yeah. Um, I think after the Villa game, it, my mindset sort of changed a little bit just because of like um, how we approach it because we, we're going to be on a bit of a high. I mean, how we play against Villa and everything. Um, I think West Ham, they, they come out pose a threat. I mean, Sunday after European football, it's always a bit of a um, bad thing just because of like energy levels. So I think you, I think if Forest catch you on on a bad day, it'd be I'd be happy with a point. Or if we do take take a chance, it's fair enough. But I think if depending what sort of team David Moore puts out against in the Europe, um, I think it'd be interesting to see how. It will affect in this. So I think it'd be a good game against two, both, both of the teams, really. Uh, just for clarity, you guys are watching this on Saturday. We're recording this on Thursday during the day, so we haven't played Olympiacos yet, hence why Dan is speaking out depending on the team Moise Brown. You'll know what team Moise Brown. We don't. We do not. We're we're recording it on Thursday. Right, uh, Dan, prediction time. Get your crystal ball out. What do you think the score is going to be on Sunday afternoon? Oh, I think... Depending on a forest campaign like they did in Villa, uh, I'll be, be happy with a point to a fair. I'll be happy with like a one or a nil nil just because it's that cliche, really. Win your own games and pick up where you can. Um, and I think if if we are what's that good as was last week, um, I think. I can see it being a one or two on first, really. But it, depending how we keep your danger men tight, really, um, because we all know what your um, danger men can be like. So I think if we keep them quiet, I, I'd be happy with one all. Perfect. Well, Dan, thank you very much. If you guys at home want to hear and see more from Dan, I'm going to do a video for his channel as well. Please head over. Um, I'll put a link to his channel in the description below, and that video will be on your end slate in approximately five seconds. But before you click on that, please do drop a like on the video. If you enjoyed it by clicking thumbs up, subscribe if you need to Hammer's chat, and uh, well, I'll catch you in a bit. And Dan, thank you very much. It's all right. Thank you for having me.